Hi, I'm Maciej, I'm a software engineer. I will share with you some of my thoughts uh, on when and where is the right place to introduce formal methods. Formal methods is a wide term that uh, describes the use of mathematics in the engineering process. In other engineering domains, uh, this is uh, so natural that it doesn't even deserve a separate name. For example, nobody would build a bridge without gaining confidence that the design is correct by doing calculations, lots of calculations. And this is considered normal. But software engineering evolved a bit differently. At some point, the domain was growing so rapidly that it has left the rigor behind. And now we have uh, development, uh, programming, coding, uh, framework and everything, and formal methods as a separate discipline. This has also led to the lack of standardization, and now mm, the ecosystem of formal methods is very fragmented. Still, there are people who would like to see the rigor back in mainstream where it naturally belongs. And maybe you are such a person, and you ask yourself when and where is the right place to introduce formal methods in your project, in your team, or in your engineering process. So let's find out what are the options. Software engineering activities can be divided into three areas. Requirements, design, and implementation. Requirements is where we learn from the customer about what they want. The design is where we think about the solution. And implementation is where we translate the solution into something that actually works, whether it's software or hardware. Depending on your industry, this terminology can be different. And uh, people disagree not only on names, uh, but also uh, whether these uh, three aspects uh, should happen strictly one after another, or maybe whether they can overlap, or whether they can be iterated uh, while the project evolves, or even whether the same people can be involved. But all these differences do not change much with regard to what are the options to introduce formal methods. So let's start with requirements. This is where we learn from the customer about what they want. This level is really mostly about communication. Customers are not really happy uh, when we, engineers, uh, force them to use some technical tool of our choice, some, some tool or notation, especially when it smells mathematics, really. And um, even if we can control the recruitment process on our side and the training process, we have nothing to say about what happens on the customer side. And people change jobs, they get promoted or whatever, and really the next person on the customer side who will be dealing with us and our project might not be impressed with our particular choices of the notation which is used to communicate the requirements. I think there are very few projects which decided to use formal methods at the requirements level and that were actually consistently successful during the lifetime of the project. So let's see the other end, the implementation. This is where we are working with the target platform, the target development environment and the target programming language. There are formal methods uh, which were invented to work at this level. And this is actually very attractive because it looks like we can take all the existing source code that we have already written, run the tool on it, and it will be fine. But it doesn't work like this. Normal programming languages do not have the rigor that is necessary to express formal concepts in the program. And even the vendors of those tools admit that the most efficient way to use them is to apply them from the very beginning of the project, from the very first line of code. But even then, the formal method will be constrained by the limitation of the programming language and of the source code. And existing solutions which involve uh, writing formal notation in source comments or in some pragmas, they are counterproductive. Because if we are supposed to hide from the compiler, we might as well move out of the source code entirely. Which brings us to the middle layer, to the design. 
but it will still not be like, uh, let's take all the diagrams that we have prepared over the years, we will run the tool on them and it will be fine. Because formal methods have to drive the engineering process. They cannot be added as an after afterthought. But the design is a very safe place to introduce formal methods. It's far enough from the customer so that our uh, tool and notation um, choices will not irritate anybody on the customer side. And it's also sufficiently far away from the uh, um, constraints of the target uh, development environment. In other words, the design level is this sweet spot where formal methods can be introduced with minimal risk of conflict with external constraints. An important outcome of this is that once the design is precise enough, and being precise is the reason to introduce uh, formal methods, is that the translation to the implementation, to the source code, can be automated to a large extent, or even entirely. In short, try to introduce formal methods as high as possible in your engineering process, with the perspective to automate it downstream, but still without forcing the customer to get involved. Unless, of course, they ask for it. If you have some thoughts on this, let me know. I'm Maciej, I'm a software engineer. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.